Good morning, my friends, and Merry Christmas. Welcome to the end of the road. It's the last episode of our 2023 AP Calculus free response question advent calendar. And I'm sad to say that we've consumed all of the chocolates in, you know, like the real physical actual advent calendar that is chocolate and not calculus. Like all the chocolates are gone. So, well, but hey, it wouldn't be an episode of the AP Calculus Free Response Question Advent Calendar if I didn't have something to snack on before punishing myself with making these math videos at like midnight. It's not punishing myself. I love it. So what I brought is some holiday berry jam. One of my students gave this to me, this this jar of holiday berry jam. I haven't tried it yet because like I'm like, what the heck do you put jam on? I, I don't know what to put jam on. I don't like eat toast. So um, I don't know. Should I put it on a biscuit? Beats me, but I have a spoon. So I'm just going to eat it. And, uh, you know, like not the whole thing. I'm not like insane. Um, you know, I'm just gonna have a spoonful. See how it is. I'm excited. It looks uh, looks really good. So, uh, anyway, I hope you're excited for our last problem today. And uh, it's not too late, and it never will be too late to go watch the rest of this uh, series. There is a playlist in the description. I worked very hard on it, and I hope that people will find these videos useful for some time to come. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is what question we're doing today. Um, I'm being careful with this lid. Why isn't is it not coming off? I just don't want to like make a mess of things, you know. Come on. Uh, okay, this is harder than I expected. You know what? I don't. This is a mason jar. I don't even know. I don't know how to open a jars like this. Obviously, obviously, I'm stupid. How do you open this? All right, there we go. <laughs> I have cracked the seal. Um, ah, oh man, it looks so good. Uh, so the problem we're doing today is an infamous problem. Maybe that's playing it up a little bit. But it's from the 2023 AP Calc AB exam. And uh, it is the most infamous question, it seems. After the exam took place earlier this year, I saw lots of funny memes about the milk problem. And that's the problem we're doing. When I asked my students about the exam, they all mentioned the milk problem. Uh, as you'll see, it's not particularly difficult. I'm not sure why people made a big stink about it. Maybe it was just because it's funny because it's about milk. I don't know. But let me try some of this jam. Mmm. Oh, whoa. Wow. Holy shit. <laughs> that is so sweet. Oh my god. Wow. Okay, that's very good. That is astonishingly sweet. I can taste so much fruit in that. Wow. I gotta find something to put that on that will dilute this sweetness a little bit. It's very nice, cold, and refreshing. All right, I suppose we should do our final math problem. This is free response question three from the 2023 AP Calc AB exam. A bottle of milk is taken out of a refrigerator and placed in a pan of hot water to be warmed. The increasing function, m, models the temperature of the milk at time t, where m of t is measured in degrees Celsius, and t is the number of minutes since the bottle was placed in the pan. m satisfies the differential equation dm dt equals a fourth times 40 minus m. At time t equals zero, the temperature of the milk is 5 degrees Celsius, so we have a nice initial condition there. It can be shown that m of t is less than 40 for all values of t. Alright, part A. A slope field for the differential equation dm dt equals etc. is shown right here. We are asked to sketch the solution curve through this given initial condition 0, 5. So coming down to the slope field, notice that this point 0, 5 is already labeled on the picture for us. We just have to sketch the curve that is in agreement with the slope field. So that curve should generally follow the path of the tangent lines, something like this. And then it's got sort of a horizontal asymptote around m equals 40. And so it would continue to proceed in this manner. The rate at which it is increasing is getting very, very slow as time 
goes on. When you first started graphing things like lines back in the day, your teacher might have often told you to make sure to put arrowheads at the ends, so it's perhaps interesting to note that according to the College Board's official scoring guidelines, you do not need arrows on this graph, so this would be a perfectly fine answer. All right, anyways, let's move on to part B. Use the line tangent to the graph of M at t equals zero, so using that initial condition that we have, to approximate m of two, the temperature of the milk at time t equals two. Remember what a tangent line is, is a linear approximation of a function at a point. We're looking for the tangent line at t equals zero, so if I were to sketch that in blue, that might look something like this, and for values of t near t equals zero, this line is a decent approximation of the function. So we'll need to find the equation for this tangent line, which requires a point and a slope, and then we'll plug t equals two into that equation to get an approximation of the temperature of the mill. Let's do part b down here. Like we said, we need a point and a slope for an equation of a tangent line. The slope we'll figure out, we'll put it in that box. The point is very straightforward. We're given the point as the initial condition. At time t equals zero, the temperature of the milk is five. So the point is y minus five, y minus the y coordinate, equals the slope multiplied by x minus the X coordinate, or in this case, the T coordinate, and that is zero. And in fact, instead of using Y and X, let's be consistent with the context here. The Y is M, the temperature of the milk at time T, and the X is T, the time since the milk was placed in the pan. All that's left for this equation is to find the slope, which is dm dt at the time t equals zero. And this is easy to calculate with our differential equation. The differential equation given was one fourth multiplied by 40 minus m. However, we know that when t equals zero, m is five, that was given to us. So we can replace m here with five. Thus, the slope that we're looking for is one fourth of 35 or 35 over four. Since we're trying to approximate m, the temperature of the milk, let's solve this tangent line equation for m. That's going to give us m equals 35 over four t plus five. Then to approximate the temperature of the milk at time t equals two, we just have to plug two into this tangent line. So that's going to be 35 over four multiplied by two and plus five. This is 17.5 plus five or 22.5. And this, of course, is in degrees Celsius. And there is our written out conclusion. The temperature of the milk at time t equals 2 is about 22.5 degrees Celsius. We just found the equation of the tangent line using that initial condition that we had and then plug in t equals 2. Moving on to part C. Write an expression for the second derivative of m with respect to t in terms of m, and then use this expression to determine whether the approximation from part b that we just got is an underestimate or an overestimate for the actual value of m of 2 and give a reason for our answer. All right, so we will take the differential equation 1 fourth times 40 minus m and we'll differentiate both sides to get the second derivative. So here is the differential equation. Differentiating the left side gives us the second derivative of m with respect to t and differentiating the right well, there's two things going on here. There's one fourth times 40, which is just a constant whose derivative is zero. And then the other thing is minus one fourth m. The derivative of minus one fourth m is minus one fourth. But since m is a function itself, which is changing with respect to time, we also have to multiply by its derivative, which is dm d t because remember we're not taking the derivative with respect to m we're taking the derivative with respect to t and m is a function of t now we can simplify this because we know what dm dt is it's written right here that was given to us so this second derivative is negative one fourth times dm dt but dm dt we know is one fourth times 40 minus m and finally we can write this as negative 
1 over 16, combining the negative fourth and the positive fourth, multiplied by 40 minus m. This is an expression for the second derivative purely in terms of m. Now, based on this second derivative, is our approximation from part b an overestimate or an underestimate? Well, if our function is concave up, then the tangent lines are underestimates. On the other hand, if the function is concave down, the tangent lines are overestimates. So we need to assess the sign of this second derivative. As far as the sign goes, there is a negative here. So the second derivative is going to be negative unless 40 minus m is negative because then the two negatives would cancel out. So is 40 minus m negative? No, it's not. We know for sure that 40 minus m is positive because we know for sure that m is less than 40. That was given to us in the question. It said right here that it can be shown that m of t is less than 40 for all values of t. So for sure, this part 40 minus m is positive. So for sure, the second derivative is negative, which means the function is concave down, and so our tangent line approximation would have been an overestimate. And there that reasoning is written out. Let's move on then to part D. Use separation of variables to find an expression for m of t, the particular solution to the differential equation dm dt equals a fourth times 40 minus m with the initial condition we've been working with so far, m of zero equals five. All right, so we will use separation of variables and then we will use this initial condition to get the particular solution. And let's see if we can fit part d over here. The differential equation we have is dm dt equals a fourth times 40 minus m. Now we need to separate the m's and the t's. We'll want the m's over on the left with the dm, and then we'll move the dt over to the right. To get the m's over to the left side, we'll divide both sides by 40 minus m. Thus we'll have one over 40 minus m dm, and then multiply both sides by dt, and so we have 1 fourth dt on the right side. Now we can go ahead and integrate the left and right sides. Integrating 1 over 40 minus m gives negative natural log of absolute value 40 minus m. And on the right, we have 1 fourth t. Let's suppose that all of the arbitrary constants we gathered to the right side, and so I'll just put a plus c over there on the right. Notice this negative came from the fact that 40 minus m inside the log has a derivative of negative 1, so this negative is there to undo that. And we need the absolute value bars because you can't have negatives in the natural log. Although, oh wait, we already know that 40 minus m isn't negative, it's always positive. So in fact, we don't need those absolute value bars. Let's just use parentheses. Now let's go ahead and use our initial condition to solve for the constant C. We know that when T equals zero, the temperature of the milk, M, is five. So on the right side of the equation, we have one fourth times zero plus C. And on the left side, we have negative natural log of 40 minus five. So on the right, we're just going to have C. And thus, this tells us that C equals negative natural log of 35. That is the value of C. So we can move on with this and find our particular solution by solving for M. This is our equation now that we've replaced C with its known value. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides by negative one to get rid of this negative in front of the log on the left. So we have the natural log of 40 minus M multiplying the right side by negative one turns it into natural log of 35 minus a fourth t. Then we'll have to exponentiate both sides as we continue to try to get m by itself. So to get rid of this log, we need to exponentiate both sides. On the left, exponentiating the ln will just cancel it out, and so we'll have 40 minus m. And on the right, we'll have e to the ln 35 minus 1 fourth t. Now by our exponent laws, we can split that up into e to the ln of 35 times e to the minus a fourth t. This of course works out nicely because e and ln cancel out. So we have 40 minus m equals e and ln cancel out to just 35 
multiplied by e to the negative one-fourth t. Then we can add m to both sides and subtract this guy from both sides. Then we'll have m all by itself equals 40 minus this term. So minus 35 e to the negative one fourth t. And that completes our solution to free response question three from the 2023 AP Calc AB exam. First edition Michael Spivak's calculus. What did you get for Christmas? 